The scripture for today's message is Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields his fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Amen. Emmanuel Choir and Ishi Orchestra will glorify God with their praise and active senior pastor will deliver the message under the title, The Blessed. for Let me introduce today's flower offering. 14th parish, we were touched by the gospel sanctification and for, the, for these years, we have obeyed the word and received many blessings. We give thanks and glory to God the Trinity for this. We, he will make a new leap and, and with the guidance of the active senior pastor, we will happily uh, lead our Christian life. Thank you. In this church, we will become the lead role of this church. With gratitude, we give this full offering. A, they lived according to the word of God and received overflowing blessings. They confess. So I'm very happy to hear their confession. I hope that in the new year, I, you, all of you will make the same confession. That's why I'm delivering this, uh, the message on the blessed. This is the last session. Dear brothers and sisters, for the last three sessions, We looked at what it means to be a blessed person through Psalm chapter 1. First, the blessed does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Second, nor stand in the seat of sinners. Third, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. The blessed also delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on the word day and night. The word of God is living and active. and pierces and devises the heart of those who yearn for and meditate on it. It helps discern between truth and untruth and guides us, all, and guides us to do God's will through the works of the Holy Spirit. As much as we practice the truth and cast up sins and evil, always meditating on the Word, our soul prospers more. Meditating on the word means that we have to think more about the meaning of meditating. You wake up in the morning and you remember the word and you recite the word and you reflect on it and you remind yourself of the word. You're doing a good job, but meditating is... is It's not just the physically uh, memorizing the Bible. It's, it's, it's not just reading the one chapter of the Bible. It is uh, reading and once you read and listen to the sermon, you have to change your, examine your heart, examine your life, and discover your shortcomings. Father God tells us to do this and that and tells us to abstain from this and that. And if you find yourself having failed to do so, you are to apply the word in yourself and discover yourself and try to live by it with deep meditation. This is uh, how you meditate on the word. You try to bear the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Just because you memorize what the nine fruits are doesn't mean you are changed. But you have to examine yourself in light of the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit and you find yourself not rejoicing, not giving thanks, and you find yourself having, un- having been annoyed. You are to 
remind you of the word when you get irritated, when you get annoyed, and you have to realize that you have, you lack joy, even though God tells us to rejoice, and when another person harasses you, you feel distressed, and you find yourself far from the ju- fruit of joy, and this is how you actually meditate on the word. You are to apply the word in yourself and cultivate it and you obey do commands and don't do commands then you make yourself prosper to do so you of course you have to physically read the word day and night 3rd John chapter 1 verse 2 writes beloved I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as yours prospers As written, those who so prospers have the blessings of good health and everything going well with them. God is with them wherever they go and bestows blessings on them. These people can enter heaven and enjoy eternal life in a place full of joy and happiness after their physical life ends on this earth. As I mentioned, If you are so prosperous, you come in the Spirit, and you at least go into the third kingdom of heaven, what about the whole Spirit? You end up in the New Jerusalem, and you will live in such glory. And even the citizens of heaven will look up to you. You have tremendous glory there. So, we have to to pursue true blessings approved by God. But, Worldly people do not know about these true blessings. They try to gain blessings on their own, but end up walking the path of the unblessed. Worldly people walk in the counsel of the wicked when it's of immediate benefit and stand in the path of sinners. They also act arrogantly in order to become elevated in status. And they think of themselves as blessed. But they pursue sins and evil and pursue their arrogance. But by doing so, they may have what they want temporarily. Sometimes sometimes they self-brag and boast about the wealth, fame, and power obtained. But as time passes, they can never remain blessed but face retribution for their actions. Today's passage, Psalm chapter 1, verses 4 through 6, explain about the consequences the wicked will face compared to the righteous. With the help of the word, may you keep in mind that you should never follow the counsel of the wicked and stand in the path of sinners. And you are to make sure that I will explain about the outcome of the wicked and you you should not think I have some wicked people around me and they will face the same outcome you shouldn't have such thoughts and when you see the wicked people facing troubles you are not to think that's the way it is it serves them right but why am I delivering this message I'm talking about the outcome of the wicked and then it feels like they are elevated, but they will face a shameful outcome. When we learn this, when we hear this, also we may see these things happening around us. Those people who used to harass you will face such an outcome. You should not have such thoughts. This is not why I'm delivering this message, you have to draw a lesson from that. You are to realize that things happen according to the word. So, you are to make up your mind not to follow the sins and evil of the world. You have to make a resolve not to live so. And Dear brothers and sisters, in reference to verse 3, 
the last session highlighted the blessings given to the blessed. Like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, the blessed abide in God's grace and bear fruits of blessings in its season. However, verse 4 writes, The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff which the wind drives away. It compares the, a tree planted by streams to a chaff which the wind drives away. Chaff refers to discarded seed coverings. Children, you have rice during a meal. They make and the kernels of rice but originally the rice is covered by is surrounded by coverings and when those coverings are removed it becomes the rice you eat adults know that but little children may not understand what I'm saying once the grain once the kernel is once the kernel Once the kernel is removed, the chaff becomes light and blows away by the wind until it disappears. Without any value, it is burned in the fire. When you blow it, it just, it just gets blown away. When the wind blows, it gets blown away, the chaff. It has no value. as well. In the past, the chaff was used to be used as an um, nowadays it's no longer useless so they are burned in the fire. The word wind in the verse means trials and tribulations. The righteous who are standing firm in faith can triumph under God's protection in spite of any trials or tribulations. When we hear this word, we can think of ourselves whether we are like the chef without coverings, whether we are like good grains or the chef. Grains have value. It doesn't get blown away by the wind. If you are wavering in trials or tribulations, if you get blown away, carried away by trials, you are to realize that you are not strong enough. You can examine yourself with this word. And good grains are righteous people and they are blessed Even in tests and trials, God protects them. So, you are very... So, we had some shocking news that a pastor went to heaven. If you are not strong enough spiritually, you may stumble because things happen contrary to our expectation and prayer. But many members didn't consider it a test or but they consider it a part of God's plan, a part of the, as a process for us to enter New Jerusalem. So, I realize that you are such good grains. I was concerned that, you know, if you are not strong enough, how could I lead you? But because you are strong enough spiritually, I don't feel burdened. Next week, I have the uh, inauguration service. I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned about how I will guide the flock like the shepherd did. I used to have such concerns, but now, as, but nowadays I don't have, I have no such worries. I feel, actually, December 31st, when the, on that day, I, but I found that our church members didn't consider it a test, but they decided to hold on to the word. I mean, I was a little bit concerned about our church members, but as I saw church members coming to the funeral and their faces filled with joy, 
and I was reminded of the shepherd's word. I prepared everything. I was strengthened to see their faces. I was very grateful. Because we have overcome such uh, moments, uh, trials, you are like the the second generation of the Israelites when they that's how the second generation Israelites crossed the Jordan and struck the city of Jericho and I believe that we can also overcome those obstacles the blessed keep close to the word of God and abide by it Even if disasters that cannot be avoided with the human efforts arise, God saves the righteous. God saves, protects the righteous, and keeps them safe. For example, we've seen many cases where our church members were unharmed and protected in a car accident. We have heard of many of such testimonies. Even though they were not perfectly righteous people, but at least they tried to live by the word, and they stayed, remained members of the m a m e n flock of the shepherd. That's why they were protected. We've seen many of such cases. Even in crisis situations where the vehicle gets totaled, our members are physically safe. Sometimes, even unbelievers who accompany them are protected thanks to our members. This is a testimony from the shepherd as a new believer shortly after accepting the Lord. On an express bus to Seoul from the countryside, the right front wheel of the bus suddenly fell off on the highway. What would happen if a wheel came off a vehicle traveling at a high speed on the highway? The bus shook violently and the passengers had no idea what to do, causing great commotions. Despite being in that critical situation of the bus was shaking, Senior Pastor Lee told his wife who was sitting next to him not to worry because God was with them. The the shepherd also said the bus won't roll and crash and even if it does, you won't get hurt. The bus traveled for more than 100 meters with a missing wheel and just ended up stopping on the highway's median strip. Nowadays, the median strip s are tall, but in the past, they were low. They were not as high as they are today. No one was hurt. Nobody was injured. Soon after, they put on a new wheel on the highway. They have spare tires. Spare tires. Tires. So when an emergency happens, they replace it. They put on a new wheel and slowly drove to its destination. The personnel from the bus company confessed that it was an impossible feat, a miracle, that nobody was injured and the bus didn't roll. Usually, buses run at a high speed, over 100 kilometers on the highway. The bus was traveling at a high speed. But nothing happened. It was a miracle, they confessed. When Senior Pastor Lee returned home, he told people about what happened. They couldn't believe how the bus didn't roll and crash, even with his front wheel missing on the highway. They said it was incredible. God protected them and changed the impossible and illogical to the possible and logical. Those who abide in the Word of God won't waver but be protected under any circumstance. Every circumstance. In contrast, the wicked are like chaff that blows by the wind. When trials and tribulations come, they cannot overcome them but waver, turning to the left or to the right. When disaster strikes, there is no one to look for protection so they can't find a way out. They end up in destruction. The term wicked doesn't just refer to the people in the world who don't believe in God. It also refers to those who say they believe in God but don't live according to His word. Those who don't change their hearts and the truth are also like the chaff that blows in the wind. Dear brothers and sisters, some people say that believing in God is so easy and joyful. 
Others say believing in God is difficult. Why do they say so? It's because they don't change their hearts in the truth. Those who obey the word of God pray pray diligently and circumcise their heart without committing sins, live a happy religious life. Every time they hear the word with the fullness of the Holy Spirit, it becomes a blessing. They can experience the grace of God and feel the Lord every step of the way. The happiness and fulfillment cannot be compared with anything else. With hope for heaven, they strive to enter into a better dwelling, enter into a better dwelling place, and try hard to accumulate more rewards. No matter the difficulties, they are not concerned because God provides a way of escape for the righteous. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide a way of escape also, so that you will not be able to endure it. Even in the face of difficulties, if you pray with faith and follow the truth, God helps you, provides you with a way to escape trouble, and and eventually changes trials into blessings. Just as rice plants have to endure the heat of the scorching sun and heavy rain and wind before they bear good grains, it's important for us to grow into stronger faith by overcoming trials. when you lead a Christian life you may uh, you, we hope that there is no trial or tribulations but that's not what the human cultivation is like as I told you through trials we become perfect after you accept the Lord did you not commit any sin? how could you not oh, Even if you meditate on the Word, but you have those original sin and you still have those uh, sinful natures, so you naturally commit sins, but you repent right away and turn from your ways. But even after you turn from your ways, you repeatedly commit sins. Other people, even while they know the Word, they fail to obey it. They don't put put themselves to death. They become stagnant spiritually, but through trials trials and tribulations, you realize that you have become stagnant. Let's say you become stagnant. You know that you shouldn't hate anyone, but your faith has to grow, and you become irritated, you become annoyed, and you backslide in faith, and you think you cast up such sinful natures, but you repeatedly commit the same sins. Let's say you have no trials, you continue to become stagnant, and then you will end up backsliding in faith. You fall fall from third level of faith to first level of faith, and you even end up committing deeds of flesh, works of flesh. But God doesn't leave them alone. God gives them trials. God allows them trials. But you shouldn't say that God gave us trials. But why? Because you committed sins and evil. Satan brings you trials. And God cannot protect them. We also use this expression. Once you become man of spirit and man of whole spirit, God may give them trials and tribulations like God commanded Abraham to offer up Isaac but before you become a man of spirit you become perfect well this is the justice of the spiritual realm But when you go through trials, God is cheering for you. God wants you to overcome your situation and turn from your ways and win victory. So that's why you have to go through trials. 
But at least when you try to live by the word, God protects you. And even when you face a test, God leads you to overcome the trials and come forth as pure gold. So, as I see those church members, after they face a trial or get stricken with a disease, they try to things to find things to repent of and repent and receive prayer and attend a divine healing meeting and they ended up being healed. They are such cases where they are changed by the trials. That's how Father God leads you to become righteous. So no matter the difficulty you may face, you are to accept it as God's love and become come forth as fruits of change. as you discover yourself and become transformed you recover the image of God with faith like gold and become an increasingly big vessel those who say they believe but don't circumcise their heart according to the word of God cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit without the fullness of the Holy Spirit it's difficult to worship or pray and impossible to find joy within a life of faith as for me nowadays As a leader of the church, I have received this duty. I have to take the initiative in the church. What I, what I, my wish and my prayer is that you lead a happy Christian life. I don't want you to say it's difficult to cast off sins, but even when you discover your sins and evil, you are to be joyful with e x p e c t i o n with the expectation that you will become man of spirit after you catch it off. But if you repeatedly discover the same sin again and again, why does that happen? Because you disobey. Even after you discover your sins and evil, you... But if you obey the word, you will feel joy and thrill of casting off. You may feel like you are the same, you remain the same yesterday and a month ago. But if you pray and making efforts, you don't remain the same. You are changing little by little. You may feel sorry and apologetic because of your slow growth. But if you are praying, if you are at least praying, also the content of your prayer, Uh, is important, and you are to pray earnestly. If you pray earnestly, if you are in the stay in the habit of earnestly praying, if you are worshiping God in spirit and the truth, and you have the earnestness to cast it off, then you are different from when from when you were a month ago. But if you remain the same, you are to discover the problems from your habit of prayer, your habit of uh, your worship attitude and prayer attitude. But if you obey the word, you are definitely different from when you were a month ago, and you can change yourself. You are, you are, when you are changing, the Holy Spirit within you rejoices, and you have this joy that this world cannot give. You are to live such Christian life. You should not make a face. you have to glow from your face. Your faith, you have to look different from, even when worldly people see you, you have to look different. You look like a different person, and worldly people may wonder why we look that different. As for me, my family and relatives are mostly t h e r evangelized, And also, we have a few, um, some unbelievers, because our senior pastor and Mr. Bong Nim Lee were the youngest in their family, and those relatives come, and they say to me, why aren't you, you are not, you don't look old. as I meet those relatives 
In grace of God, I'm living in grace of God. I told, and my cousin told me that I replied to them, I'm living an earnest Christian life, so that's why I'm not aging. And they said, oh, yeah. This is how you can evangelize your family and relatives. You are to live in God's grace and fullness of the Spirit, and you are to stay joyful. While worldly people enjoy themselves drinking and eating, but you, but what do you do after work? You, you don't, you make it a point to come to church to pray, and then worldly people may wonder what we are doing at church, but you have live with no disease and you enjoy good health but you see those uh, co-workers uh, suffering from diseases and, and they also request you to help I hope that you all of you live such a Christian life then these are uh, these things happen when you obey like the blessed people I'm talking about When you hear the words on things to throw away and not to do, you feel afflicted and distressed. When you see and hear of lustful things of the world, you become agitated, wanting to take them. Then you are not walking the way of the blessed. That's why you feel afflicted and distressed. You find the Christian life tough and challenging. If you don't obey according to word, you are unblessed. Without hope for heaven, if you encounter difficulties on this earth, you will end up complaining and be discouraged instead of praying with joy and gratitude. These kinds of people can easily stumble in trials and tribulations and may even stray from God. They fall into a fleshly world in pursuit of personal interests. God says that these people are like chef blowing in the wind. So what happens if we distance ourselves from God and depart from Him? The answer, uh, the answer is found in verse 5. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. As a result of evil, the wicked experience all kinds of diseases, disasters, and various tribulations. If you, if you obey sin rather than God, you become slaves to the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of sin, and suffer all kinds of trials and tribulations. No matter how many times you say, Lord, I believe, you cannot be protected by God. Even if you don't encounter hardship on this earth, you will eventually die and go into the fire of hell. Mark chapter 9 verses uh, 48 and 49 say, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched, for everyone will be salted with fire. Once you fall into the fire of hell, the degree of pain will be so unbearable that you cannot think of nothing except that you will jump like salt on a frying pan, scream and gnash your teeth. Those in hell are extremely resentful and scream from the intense pain to the point that it makes your eyeballs bloody with their blood veins bursting and look horrible. Those who fall into the lake of sulfur, which is even hotter than the lake of fire, cannot even scream or move. Trapped for eternity, they suffer unimaginable pain and torture, so severe that they are unable to make a sound. No matter the hardship you experience in this world, once you die, that's the end. But hell is where pain and suffering, which are worse than death, repeats endlessly. You cannot die in hell. and the fire cannot be extinguished. Once you are judged and sent into hell, there is no hope. Mark chapter 9 verses unbelievers and people who don't have true faith, they suffer in this world. And they think once they leave the world, their sufferings will be over and they commit suicide. But they have to know that there is the afterlife. We are to keep this in mind 
we are to become blessed people who abide in God's word. Mark chapter 9 verses 43 verse through 47 tell us, it is better to throw out your eyes, cut off your hands and feet, and not go to hell than to sin with your eyes, hands and feet, and be cast into hell. As said, sinners cannot be in the assembly of the righteous. It's important to remember that sinners can never mix with the assembly of the righteous, namely heaven. So, you must become righteous. Even on this earth, we can see the division between the righteous and the wicked. Usually, the alike are naturally drawn to each other. People who like drinking keep company with other drinkers. Gamblers become close with other gamblers. And those who like fishing gather together. We generally choose whom to spend time with based on our tastes and preferences. Flatterers don't keep company with the righteous and upright. Instead, honest people gather around them. Flatterers gather around the cunning. It's the same within a church. People who pursue flesh form groups with other fleshly people. People who love the world, people who love the word come together with the like. Those who evangelize keep company with others who evangelize and those who pray together with others who pray. Those who gossip tend together with the people of the same kind, regularly talk behind people's backs, spread rumors, and judge and condemn them. They they are talkative and they have much information about others. When When you go and ask these people, they know everything. You are not to... You shouldn't be such people. You are to become such good people whom whom others want to meet. Father God and the Lord, you become like Enoch, and Father God and the Lord wants you to be close to them. That's why God brought Enoch up into heaven to be close to him. If you pursue goodness, pursue, you naturally, what kind of people you are, even if you profess to follow truth, what kind of words do you say? You are to examine your words of your lips and when the good come together, they only talk in goodness and the wicked gra- and the wicked generally consider these conversations, consider these good conversations unexciting. But when people of goodness gather with the wicked, they become troubled by their evil words and actions and lose the fullness. When you hear evil words, you are heartbroken and you feel distressed. How could you debate with them? How could you dispute with them? You are not excited and you don't want to meet them. So good people who follow spirit and those who don't change but continue to follow flesh are naturally separated. In the church, we long for sanctification, long for New Jerusalem. What do you... If you don't, you are separated, naturally. Dear brothers and sisters, Matthew chapter 13 verses uh, 47 through 50 tell us, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea and gathering fish of every kind. And when he was filled, they drew it up on the beach and they sat down and gathered the good fish into containers. And but the bad they throw away so it will be the, at the end of the age and many churchgoers say that they believe but God makes sure to separate the wicked from among them simply having the truth as knowledge doesn't mean you will join the assembly of the righteous even Jesus when he carried out his ministry one of the this Nevertheless, one of his disciples was Judas Iscariot. Jesus tried to change him, but how did he end up? Judas stole from the money box. 
even one of his disciples was uh, Judas' carrier. Also, in the church are evil people. We are to change them. We are to hover them to the end. When they fail to be in the assembly of the righteous, but even so, we are to follow the truth and hover them. But God says that what about now? You should not become evil among the righteous. You are to keep this in mind and always follow the truth. You you must believe from the heart and live according to the word to join the assembly of the righteous. May you all truly believe from the heart, living according to the word, and join the assembly of the righteous. By meditating on the word day and night, I hope you will will be transformed into a holy person in line with God's will. May you live so and be recognized as a truly sanctified and righteous child before God. The last verse says, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Brothers and sisters, everyone's path of life becomes revealed before God without anything missing. You cannot hide anything from God who can see everything from our words and actions to the very thoughts of our minds. Whether a believer or an unbeliever, Everyone has an angel who follows them and records every single action, and they are judged according to the records on the judgment day. Revelation chapter 20 verse 12 says, And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. No one can escape this judgment nor deny the words written in the books. No matter how strongly someone tries to deny their actions, everyone's lives can be instantly reflected on the sea of glass in front of God's throne. According to these records, people who have walked a righteous and good path will be judged with rewards, and those who have walked an evil path will be judged with punishment. without anything missing. Not only during the final judgment, but also on this earth, people whose path God recognizes will ultimately enjoy glory, and those who have walked an evil path will perish. You can tell tell just by looking at Daniel. Daniel was in danger of losing his life in the lion's den due to the evil plans of those jealous of him. But God acknowledged Daniel's righteousness kept the mouths of the lions closed and protected him. Through God's works, Daniel survived the lion's den and received even more love and favor from the king. In comparison, what happened to those who are jealous of Daniel and wanted to kill him? Daniel chapter 6 verse 24 says, The king then gave orders and they brought those men who had maliciously accused Daniel and they cast them and their children and their wives into the lion's den and they had not reached the bottom of the den before the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. As written, the way of the righteous, uh, the way of the wicked will perish. They face destruction along with their wives and children. Only those who keep their faith and act righteously before God can be recognized by God and saved from death. God will be responsible for their end results. Psalm chapter 40 verse 2 writes, He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and He set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. Those whose paths are recognized by God are protected from difficulties and see His glory. May we all only walk before God, no matter the circumstance. I ask that you will follow I ask that you all follow the soul path approved by God instead of considering what worldly people think of us or compromising with the untruth. Let me conclude a message, brothers and sisters. For the past four weeks, I preached about the blessed people. What What is true blessing? 
Receiving love from God is true blessing. Receiving recognition from God is a true blessing. To receive true blessings, we must not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. We must delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on it day and night. We can receive God's love and recognition when we all rejoice always, stay awake in prayer, give thanks in everything, and live in a live in obedience to His will. Once we receive spiritual blessings and make our souls prosper, physical blessings naturally follow. Not only will we receive our daily bread, but God will give us whatever we ask of Him so that we can glorify Him. Whenever we encounter a difficult situation, God will save us from all troubles, ultimately turning them into blessings. Not only will we receive blessings on this earth, but we will enjoy glory in heaven. But the wealth, knowledge, health, power, and fame that the wicked gain are similar to the chaff that blows away with the wind. Being useless in the fire of hell, none of them can be a blessing. May may you all become truly blessed people before God. I pray in the name of the Lord that you may not only live a blessed life on this earth, but also receive abundant rewards and glory in heaven when the Lord Lord returns. Let's reflect on today's message in our prayer. Amen. Let's just see the prayer for the sick. If you are sick, lay your hands on your sick part. If you are not sick, lay your hands on your chest and receive the prayer with your heart's desire. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father, please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV in French churches and local sanctuaries, and all other children of God around the world. From head to toe, Give them faith from belief from heart, drive away negative thoughts and doubts, and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints, nerves, and tissues and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the Father of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy to avoid Satan. All diseases, germs, and viruses and infirmities go away. Light come. Please scourge all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, and intestinal cancers. AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problems, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of polio, stroke, arthritis, uh, and herniated discs. Back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened, get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes see well, let the ears hear well. Let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Fix their broken bones, restore them from burns, let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no scar left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerves and tissues and cells be regenerated. Bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessing of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of heavenly places and their servants go away. Go away, evil, unclean, false and deceitful spirits and separating spirits and all forces of darkness, loosen the bonds of wickedness, darkness go away, light come. Father God, 
give them strength to cry out in prayer and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As your souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery walls of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from holy things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let, let them be able to testify about the living God saying, I've met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.